So Janetta, what are the risk factors for dyssynergic defecation? Well, there are actually several risk factors to develop dyssynergic defecation. In some patients, they just never learned the proper way of having a bowel movement, the proper way to coordinate their muscles to get stool to come out of their body. In some patients who have hard stools or difficult to pass stools, they may have to have, have had excessive straining, and this can kind of result in this discoordination of those muscles. And of course, patients who've had some sort of surgery, perhaps a back surgery, um, a surgery involving the pelvic floor, uh, women who've had babies and have had obstetric trauma can also develop these symptoms of dyssynergic defecation. And uh, as we said before, chronic constipation. So a prolonged period of time with having constipation can kind of result in this um, abnormal way of having a bowel movement and this discoordination. So when should a patient be a little worried about this problem? You know, sometimes people feel that there is something they have to push against or resistance. So when do you think patients should be concerned or what will they describe to you? Oftentimes they might feel like if they're having a bowel movement that they may contract their muscles instead of relax their muscles. And there are certainly other things that can contribute to this feeling of obstru obstruction or feeling that something else is going on. So patients could have rectal prolapse or rectocele or some other sort of uh, physical problem that's uh, contributing to their symptoms. Um, and those can kind of all, um, those, that and dyssynergic defecation can often contribute to those types of symptoms.